Welcome to the lecture number 23 of compiler design. In this lecture, we will go through intermediate code generation, then types of intermediate code generation, then how we will represent the tree address code, which is one type of intermediate code representation. Then we will go through quadruple, triple and indirect triple. So intermediate code generation. So you see, we are going through the topic of compiler design. The main objective of compiler is what it translates the source language. It translates the source language into functionally equivalent target language. Okay, so here our target language is the machine level language. So machine level language means usually we are translating it into a assembly level language. Then from the assembly level language, it is easier to translate it into a functionally equivalent machine level language. So what we will do, we will take a source language, then we will convert it into assembly level language, then from assembly level language, we will translate it into functional equivalent machine level language, right? So you, all of you know the assembly level languages. So the assembly level languages are like this, ADD r0 comma r1 so here what it will do it will perform r0 equal to r0 plus r1 so here you see here we are having three addresses one is r0 three operands okay one is r0 another one is r0 another one is r r1 right so before translating it into assembly level language if we will represent the code in such a manner that it will be easier to translate it into assembly level language then it will be easier for the assembly it will be easier for the compiler to translate it into functional equivalent assembly level language so what we will do while translating a source program into a functionally equivalent object code representation a parser may first generate an intermediate representation so here you see so suppose i will write it like this uh, a C equal to A plus B, then A equal to or uh, D equal to C plus A, C plus D, or let me write uh, E equal to D plus E. So if I will write in such a manner where I will represent each statement into a three references, no more than three references, then it will be easier for me to translate it into functionally equivalent assembly level language. And also this intermediate representation uh, also helps in taking some optimizations. Okay, so this make retargeting of code possible and allows some optimizations to be carried out. Okay, so such type of representation as called as intermediate code generation. So you see in intermediate code generation, there are basically three ways to represent an intermediate code. One is by using postfix notation, one is by using a syntax tree and another one is by using a three address code. So for example, let me take an expression, let us, let us consider that S equal to A plus B star C minus D. So now, how will you convert it into equivalent postfix notation? So this one we have already studied in data structure. So by using a stack, you can translate or you can convert this infix expression into an equivalent postfix expression. Or let me do it in a um, more uh, more quicker manner. So for that, what I will do, I will assign the priority to each of the operators. So first bracket is having the highest precedence. So I will first assign plus operator as the highest priority operator. Next, I will do the multiplication. Next, I will do the subtraction. Next, I will do the finally I will do the assignment operation. So if I want to convert it into a postfix expression, so what I will do a plus b, what is the postfix equivalent a b plus next a b a plus b I have converted into postfix a plus b star c. So star c means uh, so how will I convert it into functional equivalent in postfix notation? So here I will write a plus b I have converted into a b plus then c then I will get the star. So a b plus star now this is converted into postfix now this much i have converted into postfix then what i will do i have to 
perform this minus operation. So a plus b, a, a b plus c star minus t. So what I will do? a b plus c star, I will get d minus. Now you see the whole thing has been converted into postfix expression. So now this much I have converted into postfix expression. Now s equal to this much. So how I will do? I will do s then a b plus c star d minus then equal to. So now you see I have represented this expression into an equivalent postfix form. Okay. So this is one way to represent the intermediate code. And the second one is the syntax tree. So syntax tree, uh, as I have already told you how to construct the syntax tree. But let me again explain you how, how you will convert the syntax tree for this expression. The first which operator is having the lowest precedence, equal to is having the lowest precedence. So equal to I will make it as the root node. So on the left hand side of equal to what is there, there is S. On the right hand side of equal to what is there, sir, A plus B star C minus T. So out of A plus B star C minus T, which operator is having the least precedence, that subtraction is having the least precedence. So I will keep the subtraction as the root node of the right hand side subtree. So now subtractions right hand side what I have? Subtractions right hand side I have D. So on the right hand side of subtraction I will keep. On the left hand side of subtraction what I have? I have A plus B star C. So out of A plus B star C which operator is having the least precedence? Multiplication. So multiplication. So what is there on the right hand side of multiplication? I am having a C. Okay. So I am having a C. What is there on the left hand side of multiplication? I am having A plus B. So what I will do? Plus A is on the left side and B is on the right side. So you see I have constructed the syntax tree for this expression. So this is how also you can represent one intermediate code. So next one is three address code. So three address code means what? In three address code, we will represent each statement in the form x equal to y operator z. So let me take the previous example. What was the previous example? S equal to a plus b, s equal to a plus b, star c. So here I have to put a bracket, star c, then minus d. Okay, so I need to prioritize the operators. So first, this one is having the highest priority. Next, multiplication. Here you see, plus why I have given the highest priority? Because in, it is inside a bracket. Okay, so next, division, eh, sorry, subtraction is having the next highest priority. Next, S equal to operator is having the priority. So first, which operation I have to do? I have to do the A plus B. So what I will write? T1 equals to a plus b. So you see this is in which form? This is in x equal to y operator z. Next what I will do? I will multiply. I will go through the multiplication operation. So multiplication is done between what and what? A plus b and c. So a plus b I have given the name is t1. Okay. So t2 equal to what I will write? t2 equal to t1 multiplication c. So t1 is a plus b multiplication c. Now what I have to do? I have to do the equal, sorry, subtraction operation. Subtraction is done between what and what? A plus B star C subtracted by D. Okay. So A plus B star C is stored in T2. So what I will write? T3 equal to T2 minus D. Next you see, I have evaluated the right hand side of equal to operator. Now I have to assign the right hand side to S. So what I will write? S equal to T3. So here you see in the three address sequence all the expressions or all the sequences are in the form X equal to Y operator Z. So here you see here I am having two references. So maximum I can have three references. For example here it is a reference, it is a reference, it is a reference. So this is how we will represent a three address code. Okay. So why we are representing like this? So that you see if we I will write an assembly code for this one. So what I will do? So I will write MOV 
R0, comma A. So A will be stored in R0. MOV R1, comma B. B will be stored in R1. Next, I will do ADD R0, comma R1. So what I will do? The R1, R0 and R1 will be added and the result will be stored inside R0. So it is easier to generate the assembly level code. So that's why after these con semantically con consistent parse tree, we are going through intermediate code generation. So one of the intermediate code generations are, or uh, one of the representation is three address code. So why we are going through this? So that we can easily translate it into functional equivalent assembly level language. So which is the assembly level language then converted into machine level language. Okay. So let us go through some of the notations or representations of three address code. So the three address code or statements can be represented by three ways. One is quadruples, triples and indirect triple. So let me go through first quadruple. So in quadruple representation, what we will do, we will represent the each statement in terms of operator, operand one, operand two and result. For example, let me convert this expression into quadruple form. So here what I will do, I will first assign the priority to the operators. So one, next priority is this one will be minus C. Okay, minus C is a unary operator, right? So I will give the second priority to this one. Next, multiplication division are having same precedence. So I, I need to look at the associativity. So associativity is from left to right. So I will give this one as the third priority. Next, the division is the fourth priority, right? Then the equal to operator is the fifth priority. The next what I will do, I will write T1 equals to A plus B. T2 equals to E2 equals to minus C is there. So T2 equals to minus C. T3 equal to T3. The third precedence is what? Third priority operator is multiplication. So multiplication I will perform between A plus B which is in T1 minus C which is in T2. So T3 equal to T1 into T2. Then fourth priority operator is division. Right? So what I will do? T4 equal to T3 divided by D. Then I will assign the T4 on the right hand side to the left hand side. So what I will do? Then I will write X equal to T4. Okay. So now in quadruple representation, how will I represent it? So here first, so this one is first, second, third, fourth and fifth. So first, what is the operation T1 equals to A plus B? So what is the operator plus? What is the operand 1? A is the operand 1. This one is the operand 1. And B is the operand 2. So where I will store the result? In T1 I will store the result. Is that clear? Next, T2 equal to minus C. What is the operator? Minus. What is the operand 1? C. So where I will store? I will store it in T2. Right? Next, T3 equal to T1 into T2. So, what is the operator? Multiplication. So, T1 is the operator 1. Oh sorry, operand 1. T2 is the operand 2. T2. Then, where I will store the result? I will store the result in T3. Right? Next, T4 equal to T3 division D. So, what is the operator? Division. So, between what I will do the division operation? T3. Now, where I will store the result? T4. Next, x equal to T4. What is the operator? Equal to. What is the operand 1? X. What is the operand 2? T4. Or, sorry, the operand is T4. The operand, is, operand 1 is T4. T4. Where I will store the result? In x, I will store the result. Or here also, you can also write it as what? Here also, what you can write, uh, x equal to t4. So, the operand 1 is x and the operand 2 is t4. You can also write it like this. Okay. So, now what we will do, 
we will go for a more efficient representation that is triple representation here you see in order to store the result we are using a temporary variable okay but instead of storing the temporary variable i can use the index values so let me go through that one so if i will use the index values instead of the temporary variables then the representation is called as triple representation so here again you see so this operator bracket is having the highest precedence so within bracket plus is there so this is having the first precedence next minus c this is a unary operator so this is having the second precedence then multiplication will have the third precedence then division will have the fourth precedence and equal to will have the fifth precedence right so now you see first which operation i will perform operator is so i will perform a plus b okay similar to this one similar to exactly similar to this one okay so here what i will do plus operand 1 is a operand 2 is b right next next what i will perform i will perform minus c so operator is minus operand is c okay next a plus b multiplied with minus c so a plus b is stored inside which which one so here i have written t1 so the symbol is multiplication so here you see i have written t1 and t2 so here instead of t1 t2 what i will write i will write the pointers 1 2 okay so one represents what a plus b two represents what minus c so the third operation will be what a plus b into minus c so the operator is multiplication operand 1 is 1 so what result i will get from 1 that will be the operand 1 what result i will get from 2 that will be the operand 2 next the fourth one is division d okay so i will perform the division operation between so this one and d okay so this one is nothing but 3 and d next i will perform the assignment operation so operator is equal to operand 1 is x operand 2 is 4 the right hand side a plus b star c my division by d so i hope all of you have understood how to represent the three address statements in terms of triplet triple representation so here in triple representation what we can do we can add some extra pointers so here we can add some extra pointers so that will be called as indirect triple representation so here you see here it, it is same to the triple representation but here what we have done we have added one extra pointer column to point to the um, operand or the, the point to point to the sub expressions right so such type of representation is called as indirect triple representation so i hope all of you have got a brief idea regarding intermediate code generation and the different representation of three address statements thank you